And we are rolling, and I'll just jump right in if that's okay. okay. In Chapter 1 of Lyme, the first epidemic of climate change, what did you mean by ticks rising? What we're seeing around the globe today in the 21st century, and more or less starting in the 20th century, is ticks moving northward, moving up latitudes, even moving up mountains, up altitudes. Um, conditions are much more favorable for the survival of ticks in many places. Um, you know, ticks only can walk a foot or two in their entire lives. And they live about two years, which is pretty unusual in that um, scheme of things in terms of the, uh, the world of arachnids or insects. Um, but um, they basically are moving around the globe on the backs of migratory birds. So birds can carry ticks hundreds of miles uh, from the tip of Argentina, basically, to the Yukon in the north of Canada. This is what we're seeing in North America. And the birds will stop along the way, pick up ticks, drop ticks. Now, this kind of thing has been going on for eons. Ticks have pick, been picked up by birds, hither and yon in Virginia, for example, dropped in Nova Scotia. But years ago, first of all, there was not as many ticks for a bird to pick up. Secondly, where it was dropped, it was much less likely for a tick to survive. Well, now, because of a warming planet, because of other ways in which we, we have adulterated the world. It's not just that things are warmer, things are different. That tick is going to have a much greater uh, chance of surviving, of meeting the love of its life, uh, of mating and laying some 2,000 to 3,000 eggs. So, you know, there was a um, scientist who read my book um, before it came out, and I asked him to give me a blurb for the cover. And um, he's from Drexel University, a very esteemed scientist. And he described my book as, um, as macabre, as a Stephen King novel, except that it's true. The earth is being blanketed by a scourge of ticks, and they are bringing with them many diseases. They are finding many more places to live. And we can correlate this with the ways in which we ourselves have adulterated the environment. In chapter two of Lyme, the first epidemic of climate change, what did you mean by invisible assassin? Invisible assassin is a phrase that was in a letter written by a woman who had struggled with Lyme disease for some years. She was 31 when she wrote that letter. And like many people with Lyme disease, it wasn't caught early because we don't have very good tests to diagnose Lyme disease, nor is there a great deal of awareness in some places in the world. This woman by the name of Barbara Pronk lived in Holland in the Netherlands. Um, she uh, had a terrific career working at um, Shell Oil Company in The Hague. She was very accomplished. Um, she was loved by her colleagues. She was incredibly um, efficient and knowledgeable about her job and was really well respected as a professional woman and loved as a person. And then she got sick. And her illness began to rob her of virtually everything in life that she could um, enjoy. Um, walking on the beach, the North Sea, which is where The Hague um, is located. Um, you know, walking the fields of Holland. Holland has um, a, a beautiful array of fields and biking paths, which she also liked to do, um, all around the country. She um, found herself forgetting things. She found herself um, experiencing pain unlike she, anything she had ever experienced before. She went to some 30 doctors, and she was told that she had a whole array of, of um, disorders and diseases, perhaps, which is something that Lyme disease patients do experience. They're often told they have fibromyalgia, or they have rheumatoid arthritis, or they have chronic fatigue syndrome. They're told that they, they're depressed, that they're anxious. And Barbara was told some of these things. Um, as she put it, um, 
in her letter, she said doctors told her it was all between her ears, which is a Dutch saying for, you know, it's, you're making this up, you're, um, you know, inventing things. There's nothing wrong with you. So Barbara takes to the internet, as a lot of Lyme people do eventually, and she starts reading up on things that might be associated with her disorder. She had incredible light sensitivity, sound sensitivity, touch sensitivity. And she had had a rash when she lived in Florida for a short period of time. She had gone there to perfect her English speaking because it was necessary in her job. And she remembers that she had a rash years ago. She didn't think anything of it when she was in Florida, where there is some Lyme disease, though not a lot, and again, not recognized um, to the extent that it should be when you go to a doctor. So Barbara gets sicker and sicker over time. She gets more and more discouraged. She's in intense pain. She drafts this letter in which she describes this awful experience that has robbed her of years of her life. And um, she sends it to members of the Dutch parliament. She sends it to many journalists in the Netherlands. She sends it to her friends and her coworkers. And she ends it with that she's going to take her life. Barbara goes on to do that. She took her own life as many people, some people, I'll amend that, with Lyme disease do. By one estimate, about 1,200 people in the United States commit suicide a year because of having Lyme disease. And it's not only because of the toll that Lyme disease takes on people, that it makes them forget things, that they have cognitive problems, that they have intense pain, they have problems with their eyes, with their heart. This um, pathogen ca can move widely throughout the body. But it's also because when you enter the doors of the medical system, having Lyme disease, you are often a pariah. You are told, as Barbara was, it's between your ears. And the reason is we don't have a good test for Lyme disease. We can't definitively say whether a person has active or past Lyme disease whether they have it now, and whether that's the cause of what they're suffering from. So this inability to cope with her symptoms and being rejected by the medical community leads people and led Barbara Pronk to commit suicide.